Well, hello again. This is Dave Burkus, and this is the Burkus Report, where I tell stories about exits for companies that are able to sell well, startups for companies that are just beginning in business, and great business practices in between. But more importantly, I tell stories about entrepreneurs like you, and those entrepreneurs that have done well or done poorly. But all of them have stories to tell, and most of them have great lessons we can learn. Today, we're going to talk about exits. We're going to talk about preparing for the valuation of your company and finding a way to exit your company. So number one, the Burkus method, which is a way of valuing your company and finding out whether or not your company is worth the kind of money that you think it is. There are many ways to value a company, and they really involve finding out whether or not the company is in revenue, whether or not the company has intellectual property, and much more. But what I've found is there are five basic things that you can use to value your company, even if there is no revenue, even if you're pre-revenue. And I'd like to talk about those for a few seconds. First of all, the valuation depends upon you, the idea, the team, whether or not you have an idea which the buyer is willing to pay money for. And so what I've done is divide the items that I'm about to talk about into five various classes. And the first one, the value of the idea, your company, the team, is worth up to about $500,000. If it's a great idea and one that makes the buyer excited, that is a $500,000 idea. And the second one would be whether or not the team itself is able to carry this company through to, in this case, the execution of the uh, agreement to sell, or if it's a brand new sale, the execution of earning money for the company. And if the team itself, without having to replace people, without having to add people, can do just that, that's worth another $500,000 and gives me a chance to see the value of the company increasing based upon that alone. Have you produced the product itself? If it's a young company, have you produced a prototype? Have you done something that gives us the opportunity to know that there's value out there? And if so, there yet is another up to $500,000 worth of valuation. Do you have strategic relationships that would give you the opportunity to use other people's relationships to get things done. And if so, there's another valuation of up to 500000 And finally, if you're in sales and the product has rolled out, is the public accepting it? Because what you've done by doing that is to reduce financial risk and reduce market risk, and that's up to another 500000 So for very small businesses, the value can be almost nothing, up to about $2.5 million. Beyond that, then we use other financial methods of determining. So test yourself for those five things. Have you found your company in a sweet spot in any of those areas? Do you have a value that you think you can begin to zero in on that a buyer might look for? It's just a beginning, a way of finding out whether or not your business is as valuable as you think it is. Next, let's talk for a few seconds about a way in which you can find the buyer. You know, there are business brokers for small businesses, and there are business dealers who have licenses for very much larger deals, but there is a way of your doing it yourself. And there's an exercise which I have some of my companies perform that you might be interested in, and that exercise is to list 10 companies that could be your business buyers. So if you make a spreadsheet, if you make a list on a piece of paper, think of four columns and up to 10 rows. And each column would have value. The first would be the name of one of those companies, up to 10, that could buy your company. And the second would be what it is that they would want if they had perfect knowledge of what your company did. We'll call that your core competency. And the third is what you or your company would want from that buyer. And you think about that for a second. It's not the money and the purchase. Of course, that's part of the deal. It is what you would want from that buyer if your company could succeed more as a part of that buyer's enterprise. And fourth, finally, what's the likelihood of this happening? Zero means it isn't, 10 means it will, and somewhere in between. If you go back to column number two, what you're going to find is that more than 40% of the companies, as you try and get inside their heads, will want the same thing from you as each of the others. The thing that's important about that is, many times I've discovered that is not what you think is the most important thing your company produces. It may turn out to be your intellectual property, where you think it's the product. It may turn out to be you and the people, where you think it's the product. It's a great exercise. It's one you should all perform, and it's one that makes a lot of sense to do. So finally, let's talk just about the kind of business buyers there are. There are three kinds of business buyers. The first is the financial buyer that 
runs the numbers and decides how much your business is worth based upon how much that business will generate over time. That isn't your best buyer because that's not the one where the most money will come. The second is the strategic buyer, the one who can integrate your business with his or her business and make the two worth more than each alone. That is worth a premium and therefore it is worth extra money. The third is the one that I found is the one you go for and rarely find and that is the buyer who is emotional. And I had that happen with a business that I sold once and the emotional buyer found and I found that there was something that I didn't know about when I made the sale but found about afterwards and it taught me a lot. What I found was the emotional buyer was about to have the first announcement ever of a reduction of revenue. It was a public company and our company had enough revenue to cover that reduction as well as help move that company from a hardware based company into a software based company and in the end they paid much more than they would have ordinarily to close that deal before the end of the quarter and to be able to announce both things. They were now in the software business and their revenues were up. You just never know. How about that president or CEO that sees you winning business from that company and gets angrier and more unhappy every time one of those sales is lost? That becomes not a strategic but an emotional buyer. If you can find an emotional buyer after doing your list of 10 and if you have a valuation that looks like it's something reasonable and you can begin to build upon that, you have a winner. Today we talked about exits. This is Dave Burkus from Burkonomics and the Burkus Report.